and the fact that we can represent light as a ray. We talked about the fact that we can bend light and during the bending of light, the colors actually separate. So the bending of light was called refraction and the separating of the colors was called dispersion. So now we're gonna look at what you can do with light that you can bend. So the first demo is a little activity. Suppose I build myself a couple of different shapes out of glass. So this is glass here and it's gonna bend the light. So if I turn my laser on, um, if the laser hits straight on, the light doesn't get bent. So if the angle is zero degrees as measured from the normal, it's not bent at all, it goes straight through. But laser light or a beam of light which hits up here at the top gets bent as it enters the glass and it gets bent again as it exits the glass. And so the beam of light that hits the top part of my little um, shape here gets bent downwards. The light that hits the middle doesn't get bent and the light that hits the bottom gets bent upwards. So you can see that an arrangement of sort of two pointy ends with a rectangular middle can kind of bend light all towards the middle over here. So light that's heading this way gets bent up, middle, and down. So we can actually refine this shape and uh, do a better job of bending the light. And that's what we call a lens. So a lens is a special device which bends light and it's made so that all the light that hits it, it's coming parallel, gets bent to a point. And so um, you guys have probably experienced this with a magnifying glass. You take a magnifying glass outside on a sunny day and you can take all of the light, which is normally spread out over a fairly large area, maybe the size of your hand, and you can focus or concentrate that light by bending it all down on a single point. And that point right there gets really hot. It gets hot enough that you can actually ignite paper or twigs. So what's happening is something like this. Rays of light are coming in towards a lens. And this lens isn't quite the same shape as this. It's a little more refined, but light that hits near the top gets bent a lot. Light that hits halfway down gets bent a little bit and light that goes to the middle doesn't get bent at all. And then light that hits on the bottom half gets bent upwards and all of the light converges on a single point. We call this the focal point and we call the distance of that point from the lens the focal length. So we call this a converging lens because rays of light converge to a point right here. After they pass each other, if there's nothing there, they just keep going and they spread out again. But um, the important thing here is that rays of light that are coming in, that are parallel to each other, are all bent to the same place. So the farther they are from the middle of the lens, the more they get bent, so they all end up at the same place. That's the focal length, okay? So a lens is a device which causes light to bend or to change directions. Now we can make lenses that are actually different shape. And so this is what we call a diverging lens. And so in this case, the light coming in, instead of going towards a point, gets bent so that it looks like it's coming away from a point. So we call that a diverging lens. And your contact lenses are probably lenses that look like this, as are your glasses. If you have glasses, you might feel uh, and notice that the middle is skinnier than the edges. They're sort of like this inverted shape and that causes light to bend out a little bit. And we'll explain why in a little bit here. Okay, so a little bit of lens terminology. Converging lenses, which are also sometimes called double convex lenses, but you don't need to know that. Um, they cause light to converge at a point. Um, they have a positive focal length, and a diverging lens causes light to diverge. And those are called concave lenses, and they have a negative focal length. All right, now let's see what we can do with this idea of bending light. So what we have here is a candle, and it's just a regular old candle that you stick in your window at Christmas time. And it sends out light in all directions. And so you can see some of the light is hitting the cardboard over here. And uh, if I were to block the light, you can see where it hits there. So some of the light is hitting the, the cardboard. The, the light is spreading out in all directions. But what I want to do is I want to stick a lens in here. And if I stick a lens in here, then some of the light, which was spreading out. So as the light comes here and spreads out, some of it gets bent and 
you can kind of see a bright spot there. Now, here's where it gets really cool. If I move this to a certain location, then an image will form. So what I mean is this. If we take a really close look over here, you can see that what we actually have on the cardboard is a little tiny light. It looks just like the candle that we started with, except it's over here and it's upside down. And so if I really make tiny adjustments here, I can make the light converge right at the right place. And we call this focusing. So if I get this, let's see, that's worse. So it looks like right about there is focused. You can see a little tiny bulb. Now here's the really cool thing. So um, what's happening is the light, which was spreading out from the bulb, it was spreading out in all directions. It got bent by the lens here and focused back to a single uh, point there. So you can see an image of the little light bulb, okay? So we call the distance from the candle to the lens, we call it the distance to the object, and we call the distance from the lens to the image, we call that the distance to the image. And we're gonna do a lab investigating that. But let me just show you what happens. There's actually two ways to form an image. If I move this lens closer to the light, then something cool happens. Over there, you can perhaps see an image of the light. So now here's the original light, and it's kind of bright, it's hard to see, but it's actually got a little um, piece of wire that's glowing hot. And that light is spreading out in all directions, but the part of the light that hits the lens here gets bent into an image, and in this case, the image is bigger than the original object. So the distance to the image is from the light to the lens, the distance, that's the distance to the object, excuse me, and the distance to the image is from the lens all the way down here to where that image forms. And if I move my lens a little bit, you'll see that gets out of focus. There's only one spot where everything's getting bent at just the right amount. Now that's out of focus. And so we say we are focusing, and this is exactly how an overhead projector works. It's how your eyeball works. It's how a camera works. We bend light using refraction to form an image. In this case, the image is magnified. It is larger than the original candle. So there's the candle. And there's the image of the candle being projected over on the cardboard. All right, so that shows you how an image is formed. So now let's play with a little app. And if you want to, you can go to the FET website and actually um, run this app yourself. It looks something like this. And what it's doing is it's showing you how the light is spreading out from a source. So imagine this is my window candle and the beams of light are spreading out in all directions. Now, the one, the beam of light that goes in this direction, um, it, it just misses the lens and it just keeps going in that direction. The ones we care about, though, are the ones that hit the lens. And the beam of light that comes here and hits the lens gets bent, and it goes this way. And the beam of light that goes down this way and hits the lens gets bent, and it goes this way. And no matter where it hits the lens, any beam of light that hits the lens gets bent and ends up right over here. So we say this is the image, all right? Now, um, if the beam of light was coming in parallel, so if I move my candle here a little bit, oh, actually, let me switch here. If I look at the beam of light that is going parallel, that beam of light gets bent through the focal point. But not all these beams are parallel, so that's why they don't all converge here. They actually converge back over here. If I move my object where it's located, if it gets really far away, then the image gets smaller and closer to the focal point. These the X's are the focal point. On the other hand, if I bring my image closer and closer and closer, then the location of, excuse me, I bring my object closer, the location of the image gets farther and farther away and it gets bigger and bigger. And that's kind of what's happening when you have a projector. So we are going to explore this in lab. So the distance from the lens to the thing creating the light, that's called the object. This is called the object distance. And the distance from the lens over to here is called the image distance. Now there's a couple of fun things to note. Um, let's imagine a car headlight. So I'm going to switch gears here slightly. 
If I have a car headlight, what I actually want to do is put that headlight in front of the lens right on the focal point. And if I get that lens right on the focal point, then all the light that comes off of my bulb, it hits my lens in my headlamp, and it gets bent so that it goes out straight. So without a lens here, that light would keep spreading out and get weaker and weaker and weaker. But with a lens in front of your light bulb in your headlamp of your car, you can bend that light so it all heads out. And that's why you've got to buy a very specific bulb for your car. And you can make the light actually reconverge. Or you could make the light just continue to spread out more and more, depending on where you put the um, bulb in relation to the lens. So that's an example of how we might use a lens. Okay, But um, in general, what we're looking at here is images that are formed because we're bending the light. Now we call this a real image because the light rays actually reconverged over here. There's another thing called a virtual image. and uh, We'll look at that a little later, um, but we're going to look at real images right now. Okay, so that's an example of image formation. Now let's take a look at your eye and see how that works, because that's an excellent example of how we use a lens to bend light to produce an image. So here is a model of your eye. Um, you can go to ophysics.com and uh, try this yourself, but um, your eyeball is basically, that's the anatomy of your eyeball. The I'm going to kind of just take that away so we can kind of deal with the essential part. Your eyeball has a lens, and when you look at an object, the light from that object spreads out in all directions, but when it hits the lens in your eyeball, it gets bent. And in the back of your eye, you have a retina. It's basically the detectors, and the light must be focused on the retina in order for your brain to correctly interpret it. So what happens is when an object is near you, you can make your lens nice and fat, which bends the light a lot. If the object moves far away, so here the object is far away, now the light's coming like this, and your eyeball is bending it too much. It's not focused on your retina. And so what you can actually do, it's really cool, is you can change the curvature of your lens with some muscles in your eye, and that makes the lens here thinner. Notice how the shape of the lens there changes. And you can bend the light so that it hits just on the retina. And this is what you're doing when you're focusing on something. If you look at your finger really close to your face, and then you look at something really far away, it takes a second or two for your eye to adjust because you are changing uh, the curvature of your lens. Now, if you're like me, you might be nearsighted. And here's the thing with nearsightedness. If I'm looking at something that's near, I can change the shape of my eyeball, and I can make it focus. All's good. And if I look at something that's kind of far away right there, I'm good. I can change the focal point. But if I look at something really far away, like 30 feet or something, no matter how much I change the shape of my lens, I cannot change it enough to get this focal point back on my retina. See, no matter where I do, I just can't quite do it enough. My, my lens is bending the light too much. So in order to correct for that, I've got to put an extra lens on the outside, and that looks like this. So my glasses are actually diverging lenses. They're thin in the middle and thick on the outside, and they cause the light from a faraway object to actually bend out a little more so that when they hit the lens, they get bent to exactly the right place. And now if we bring the object closer um, or farther, when it's far away, they correct, and when it's closer, I don't need them. I can actually take off my glasses and I can see without my glasses. I just can't see things that are far away. So that's called nearsighted. I can see things that are near. There's also farsightedness, and that's people who can't see things that are um, near, and they need a different kind of correction. They cannot get, um, when things are really near like this, they cannot get that to focus. They need a little bit of extra help. And that's actually another converging lens. But that's pretty rare. Most of us who are uh, needing optical correction are nearsighted. We need um, a little diverging lens here. So that's the idea. Things are blurry when they're not focused, and we can change the lens to focus the light. All right, so here's a quick summary of what we know. Refraction can be used to bend light. That's the first point, okay? And you're going to uh, have to jot this down to kind of let me know you've paid attention here. So the first thing is the refraction can bend light. 
and this allows us to make lenses that can form images. The second important thing is that an image is real if the light rays from a point actually converge on the other on another point in space that is on the other side of the lens. So a real image is one where the light rays spread out, hit the lens, and get bent back together to form an image. All right, so what we're gonna do uh, next is actually a lab where you're going to investigate the relationship between the images and the objects.